Hello everyone and welcome back to another market update. Today we'll be talking about the stock market, the price of Bitcoin, oil and other markets. Um, so diving right into it, this week has been mostly a sideways week. As you can see we've been crashing into uh, this key price level here that's uh, highlighted in this area. And so right now we're really in the phase of um, indecision or, or chop and I think that the next week or two will be very telling as well as um, also potentially very slow and misleading. So what I'm looking out for for prices here is actually I have a bias uh, to the upside. I think that we're going to see better and better news come out and we're going to retest uh, this level here. And it's at the point of maximum euphoria, of maximum uh, happiness, if you will, where everybody thinks the stock market is going to, everything is over, that's when I will be getting interested in uh, maybe looking at the market, having an opportunity uh, to roll down, right? Because I think right now we're still in the disbelief phase. So people are seeing this rally and they're saying it's not possible that the stock market continues to go up. I'm not going to be a buyer. And what's going to happen is that institutions and, and other traders are going to continue to buy up the market. And it's right around this point here, the FOMO, the fear of missing out is going to become too high. And uh, that's when you're going to have your retail buyers coming. And you know, for every seller, there's a buyer, right? So those retail buyers will be buying from a seller. And that seller will most likely be an institution that's thinking two steps ahead here, right? So I think we continue to get positive news out of the next two weeks. And then at that point, the risk, again, I can't predict the markets and nothing in this video is financial advice, but I think this up around in this higher price ranges, uh, there's just a higher risk of a reversal. And I think that the, the February, October timeframe again, uh, will be the time of opportunity. That's when the elections will start coming up, a lot of uncertainty. Most market crashes or, or severe declines also tend to happen within the months of September and November and October, of course, being included there. So that's my thoughts on the stock market. Um, I did manage to buy a little bit here and I sold most of my stock market positions here. So I do feel like I'm not uh, positioned into the market so heavily but I'm going to be patient and I'm not going uh, to chase uh, because I'd rather be in cash and be safe and be patient and invest in a couple other assets than uh, be chasing the stock market too much. And so this is the VIX, this is the volatility index for the S&P 500 and as you can see that's been declining and uh, I actually continue to see this decline but I continue to watch this uh, price or this indicator closely because it gives you a telltale sign as to when fear might be coming back into the market. So you can see um, so far that has not been the case. But if one of these candles closes above this 10, 10 day moving average, then I'm going to start getting interested in maybe shorting the market or buying uh, assets that tend to do well uh, during market declines. Moving on to oil, as we can see here, oil is a crashed market. Uh, personally, I am not investing uh, in crude oil right now for the long term. I think uh, there's no real demand for oil right now that's going to be driving up prices. And uh, if you're thinking about investing in oil through an ETF uh, like USO, then uh, I highly recommend you research and do some Google because USO is not a, a good ETF to get exposure to the price of oil. And the reason for that is because it invests into the futures uh, contracts and it this stock does not actually own oil it actually trades uh, deriv derivatives so if we do future oil contract uh, curve we'll see let's see if we can find one real quick uh, you'll see that actually the futures markets uh, price in an increase here in the price of oil so because USO is constantly rolling over its contracts the only way that you can make money through USO is if that you think that you are able to outsmart the futures market as a whole. And so good luck doing that because the futures markets is uh, traded by the biggest oil companies in the world and the largest hedge funds. So 
it's going to be hard to out trade those guys and that's why generally i'm staying away from the oil markets unless uh, i see something change moving on to gold as we've spoken about in other videos uh, i spoke about this level here at uh, the 1700 level to be a good place uh, to be buying and as you can see here we did get a bounce now i don't know if we start rolling over maybe we get a deeper decline uh, maybe somewhere um, down here into the 1600s and from there we start to move back up but this is my price target $1900 over the next couple of weeks or months which lines up to the all-time high here uh, in gold long term and so we've seen gold have monstrous rallies in the past uh, post and also during financial crises so that is really what I'm playing. I'm a long-term buyer of gold, especially as uh, the Federal Reserve and other central banks across the world continue to debase their currencies. Another way that you can get exposure to the gold market is through GDX, which is gold mining stocks. Um, also invested into this, also playing uh, for the long-term. Here we are looking at silver. Silver is looking a little more, bit more droopy than gold. And you can see that here by the gold to silver uh, ratio, right? So when this is going up, gold is outperforming silver. Silver had a little bout of uh, overperformance here, but uh, you can see that the trend, the overall trend has uh, resumed and gold uh, continues to outperform silver, which is why I predominantly have silver over gold in my account. Moving forward to Bitcoin, a very exciting market. We've had a huge um increase of almost 60 percent in the last uh 60 uh, let's get a little more precise here over the last uh 46 days uh this blue line here represents the having event so the having event is a date and time where the supply of new bitcoin being created gets cut in half right so that's very uh bullish for the price and um I'm hoping that after this, uh, this happening event that maybe we can start to see a new uptrend form and we can see Bitcoin resume its uh, upwards trajectory uh, because I think there's a lot of upside here. Like I was thinking back because going back uh, to the stock market here uh, on a weekly chart and uh, for, for almost two years I did not invest into the stock market and the reason why is because uh, valuations were too high. I didn't really see a lot of upside um, relative. I just didn't see too much room for us to grow, right? And so now we're only we're only 15% away from the all-time highs. We're really trading back where we were two years ago, um, and the economy continues to be shut down. And so, if a year ago I didn't see value in this market at these prices, I'm not really seeing the same. Kind of value in this market right now and so that's why personally in my own portfolio that's why i'm more heavily invested in bitcoin um, probably around 80 percent of my portfolio is uh, in cryptocurrencies as a whole right so we are testing some really major levels here 7500 it's uh was a low here as well as huge resistance uh over here and so we're at a key, key level. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we went back down here to maybe 7,200 or maybe 6,800, uh, chopped around and then continued the uptrend. And so $10,000 um, would be my price target after that. So I'm seeing a maybe a 20% downside scenario and a 36% upside so the risk to reward right here is not the greatest uh, but maybe if there's a little dip and you can get in more or less around this uh, 6,800 level and let's say you're a seller here at uh, let's just call it 10,000 for even numbers that is a 6.8 uh, sorry a 5.8 to 1 risk to reward ratio so you're you're risking about one dollar to make six I think that's a pretty a uh, good trade and, and the odds are, in my opinion, uh, in your favor there. So uh, looking at some other stock, uh, some other cryptocurrencies, sorry, is um, 
Ethereum, I bought quite a quite a bit of Ethereum. I, I did buy some here closer to the tops. I thought this was gonna be a dip and then we crashed. Obviously, this was related to, to the coronavirus here. We had a 60% decline. And uh, from the lows, we've actually gone up 80%, right? And you can see here uh, in one of my other accounts, I bought 600 euros and I just decided to mark it here on the chart. Um, so that position is up about 36%. So uh, 260 is my target to take profits. I think we could chop around, but ultimately this is looking really nice. Uh, even if we stay within this downward wedge, uh, there's still another $60 of, of upside here. And uh, as you can see, Ethereum has gotten to some pretty high levels here in the past. Uh, that's about a 600% gain. So uh, this asset here could really provide tremendous uh, returns. Another asset that I like is Tezos. Tezos is obviously up big time. We had a huge crash. Um, it's up almost 100% from the lows. I would not be chasing Tezos right now if you don't own any, but uh, maybe if we see, call it a maybe a 20% correction, that's when you wanna be getting in. You wanna be patient with these things, right? So. These cycles here, they happen. Uh, they're a little slow though, right? So the average cycle is about 60 days long. If we go here from high to low, that's about 70 days. From this low to this high, that was another 50 days, right? So two month cycles, two month cycles. Right now we're here from the bottom to here. We're about day 40, right? So if we can wait another you know, 30 to 40 days, I think that's when you're gonna get a new opportunity. So really, if I were to say, you know, give a tip at the end of this video, it would really be uh, be patient, let the market come to you, and uh, never chase markets. That's gonna really be uh, the main way that you lose money because if you start chasing, the second it goes against you, you get freaked out, you sell, then you forget about it and then it starts going up and you're like, oh no, I need to buy it again. By that time, it's too late, it's already rallied and you've missed out on most of the gains. So don't be that person. If you don't wanna be that person, make sure you uh, go to my website to link below. I have a WhatsApp trading group where I actually post alerts and I put it in real time when I'm making my trade. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe, check out the subscription, uh, the, uh, the link's below and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks again.